Well, hey, welcome everybody back to the Community Christian Podcast. I'm Jason, and across the table from me, I have Nathan. Hello. And if you are watching rather than listening, uh, you will see that we are a third lighter today yeah. than we normally yeah. are. Uh, That's right. Ed is not with us nope. on set today. And uh, if you're watching last week, uh, maybe you have a clue as to why. I think my p top five top basically five did him, him in. Yeah. yeah, that might have been part of the problem. So, yeah, he's uh, he's not even in the office this week. No, we <laughs> he's just gone. It. We no. haven't even seen him. No, he, he preached on Sunday and then was, he was out of town, this, man. can't do this anymore. So. But, uh coronavirus didn't get him no i hope god i hope not i got um, something right now i hope you that's got a little not, something going on. i got a little something going on right now everyone's a little worried right now so okay. six feet is what they say we're supposed to be this is this not, is six, not feet. six feet son so i don't know uh, i don't know what that i've is. already had it so i'm probably immune all right well there you go whatever it there you go. whatever is, it is we will find out soon all joking aside ed is on a scheduled vacation he is not gone in case some of y'all took that seriously yes hopefully yes. you didn't but uh so we're gonna make do without him Yes. I, I can tell you this. Uh, this podcast will be probably much shorter. Yes. And much less loud. No, that's true. That's so, true. So I'll, go ahead and just crank up those headphones. You'll be all right. <laughs> you won't get ear splitting, but, uh, you know, volume or laughter and stuff like that. So that's true. All right. Well, as always, I like to remind you, make sure you're subscribed on YouTube if uh, you're watching. If not, on a podcast app if you want to listen. Um, I don't think we're on Spotify. I mean, uh. Stitcher, Stitcher yet. yet. No, I haven't heard the... What, the I haven't got the Stitcher approval, yet, but so. we are on Spotify, Google Play, Apple, all that good stuff. And yep. the question link is still up on the description for everybody uh, to leave us questions. And uh, people are still doing that. We I got, know. We, we got, got more questions yeah, today. We got more questions today. So uh, make sure to do that. And uh, watch for the clips that we'll be putting on YouTube to some yep. of this stuff that uh, you can share with friends. All right. So let's get into the questions all right. first today. Um Somebody uh, sent this question in, and uh, they want to know, what is the reason that several times Jesus refers to himself in the third person? Just because he likes to. Right, he's just, you he, know, he's that way. He's that guy. Jesus no. Jesus likes uh, lentils, <laughs> and Jesus likes uh, figs. Not the fig tree. We no, learned that we last week. We learned that last week, but uh, yeah. honestly... Um, well, the truth is, he doesn't always refer to himself in the third person. But, no. I, but I, and I wasn't absolutely sure what the questioner was referring to. But I'm going to have to take a really a big guess here, and I think I know. A lot of times, uh, Jesus refers to himself as the Son of Man, right? And that is sort of a third person reference. Mm -hmm. And um, so, if that was what you were talking about, that's what I'm going to answer. Whether or not that was what you were yeah. asking, it's, well, this is what we want. That's talk what about. I'm going to talk about. Um, <clears throat> That term actually comes from a passage in the book of Daniel, mm -hmm. way back in the Old Testament. I think it's around chapter 7, something like that. That's what I think, too. And uh, it's, it's the name that the Jewish people always used to refer to uh, the Messiah, who would come and set up a kingdom, and it would uh, be an everlasting kingdom. And so um, you'll notice whenever Jesus is, he doesn't always use that term, but when he does, it's most often when he's trying to make uh, a connection between himself and that term. He's identifying Correct. himself as the as the Messiah. So you hear a lot of people say, well, Jesus never came out and said he was the Messiah. Actually, he did. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was very clear. I mean, there were times when he just said, I'm the guy. But then there mm -hmm. were just times he would use that term. Mm -hmm. And so any any person who was of the Jewish heritage who heard that term would know exactly what he was talking about. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, and I looked this up, I, I was curious, um, the, this term in the Gospels is used like 80 times. Okay. Which yeah. is a lot. I didn't realize that it was used, and 30 of those are in the book of Matthew. I knew Matthew used it more, but I didn't realize 30 sounds more than I had in my head. So mm -hmm. that's, yeah, I knew that a lot. Now, that could have been just, I found it somewhere. I, I'm trusting yeah. my source. Yeah, but I trusted the source. I'm go back but, and look at that. Yeah, but. I'd heard that Matthew, that was a big part of, you know, when Matthew's writing his, because you can see that the more, uh, once again, if you're in discipleship, that's our discipleship Bam! plug there it is. of this episode. But the more you read the Gospels over and over again, you can really see like the different personalities of, of each of the writers kind of coming through. And Matthew really is connecting a lot of his stuff to Old Testament prophecy. Yes, that happens time. a lot in his. And so Son of Man's a big part. And I think that's it really ties in a lot to the series that we're in right now about Jesus 
is greater. Mm -hmm. That what a lot of what Jesus was doing, and we talked about this before, is he's really comparing himself to Israel and he's comparing himself to Moses and he's comparing himself and, and really tying in all this Old Testament stuff and saying, I'm fulfilling that mm -hmm. and that's done. And so the Son of Man prophecies, you're talking about like in Daniel 7, they're also tied to all the other kind of Messiah prophecies yep. that are throughout the the prophets, and so they had all these uh, understandings of what happened when the Messiah came. And mm -hmm. you know, there's there's one uh, where Jesus, and I think this is in Luke four or something along those lines, where Jesus comes and um, opens up the scroll of Isaiah, yeah. and he says, uh, you know, I've come to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, and he reads this whole thing of, of, of sight to the blind and freedom for the captives and all this stuff. And then he says, in me, this is fulfilled. And yes. really the idea that we don't get is they had a lot of hopes that were placed on the Messiah. Mm -hmm. And so like you said, when Jesus comes and he calls himself the son of man, that wasn't just a title to them. They understood all this other stuff, all this context it. that comes with it. And it's yes. really where all their hope is placed on Jesus so that when Jesus dies, uh, on what we now celebrate as Good Friday, for them, this is a devastating thing because they feel like, well, all of our, all of their hopes were placed on Jesus doing these things in their mind, very much in an earthly context. And Jesus mm -hmm. says, no, I'm bringing this kingdom that's going to change everything. Mm -hmm. And and the resurrection, that's why the resurrection is our hope. And it was, it was their hope as they now understood, oh, this kingdom is something new yep. and it's greater than anything we understood before. Yeah, and the, the Son of Man term that he uses for himself was controversial and not just the fact that he was using it, but a lot of times in the way that he was using it. Like, right. for instance, one of the first times he ever uses that term, uh, he says, the Son of Man has no place to lay his head, mm -hmm. which no good Jewish person would have ever considered because he was the son of man, the, the Messiah was going to be this hero, conquering, powerful figure. And then Jesus says, oh, and by the way, he's homeless. <laughs> right, and, yeah, yeah, and, exactly. And, and it's kind of like, oh, really? You know, and they would have seen an offense to that. And then, of course, one of the last times he uses that term is when he's on trial in front of the uh, the Pharisees. Mm -hmm. And he says, and they, they say, identify yourself. You know, who are you? And he says, he says, look, you're going to see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven in power, establishing his kingdom. And, it, and of course, it got him slapped across the face right. by the high priest because you know, they realized what he was saying was, I'm, I'm greater, right. and, I, and, it's, right. and it's all fulfilled in me. And, and they saw that as just blasphemy, of course. Mm -hmm. and, they, and that was when they were, they were just determined, you know, this guy's got to go. Uh, so, yeah, Jesus uses that term a lot to refer to himself. And yes, it is in the third person. But it is not because he's, you know, it, it's not like when we refer to ourselves in the third person, we're just, I don't know, making us, ourselves. Yeah, or out whatever. To be That's something. just the fun way we it's like the fun to talk. We I like. guess, but. It's, and it's not. This is not trivial. This is something he's doing right. on purpose. And, and you mentioned, uh, or we mentioned earlier, Matthew uh, talks, uh, uses that term more than anybody. And it's because Matthew's gospel is written primarily to a Jewish audience. That's right. It is the the gospel that quotes more Old Testament than yep. any of the others. So he's primarily trying to convince these folks, hey, this is your Messiah and you missed him. Yep. And so that's the reason. Yeah, Matthew opens it. with the genealogy. Yep. Matthew Matthew has the whole part about that. Yep. I, I just think that's, and I think that's huge. And uh, we, we end up missing a lot of that, that for them, and I think the point you made about it being kind of con controversial to them, the mm -hmm. ideas everyone had about Jesus, or not about Jesus, but about the Messiah, mm -hmm were so radically different than than anything Jesus was, which is why it was so hard for the Pharisees or for really all these different groups uh, that were religious leaders at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, it was so difficult for them to see what was clearly God moving. I mean, you see Jesus do these amazing things. Even if you just talk about the miracles and the way he treated people and the healings and the, the exercising demons as we talked about last week. Clearly this is God at work in something, but all of them, because it didn't fit in the box they had of what a Messiah would look like, they go, mm, yep. that's not him, yep. that's not him. And obviously we're, we've been learning in this series, we all have a box we try to fit God into, mm -hmm. but Jesus is greater than our box. Yes. He is greater than whatever we want to put him in. All right, so hopefully that answers the question. Yep. Whoever. Glad, thanks for sending that one in. Um, and here's another one, we got two today. So here's our oh, second one. Here we one. go. Here's our second one. 
This one might be a pretty short answer. All right. <laughs> it's I'm just ready. The truth. And there's no disrespect to the person who sent it in. It's just it's just gonna be kind of short, maybe. Or not. We we talk about we stuff. Can, we can we, we can, can make anything on on not on. that short. Oh no, but. but yeah, okay. Here's a question. They want to know, is there an easy way to explain the Trinity? No. No. <laughs> no. There's not an easy way to there explain it. There is the no Trinity. easy way to explain it. And I get where that comes from because people hear that term and they, you know. And for those of you who are just new to whole, this whole thing, what yeah, they, that's probably important. What, what we mean by the Trinity is you've got God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit, uh, three in one. Our God is one. We have one God, but He exists in three distinct persons. Right. Um, and that doesn't mean three forms. That is not what it means. Mm -hmm. It means that He is one, but at the same time, He is the three at the same time. That's why it's hard to describe. Yeah, it's because you can't describe it. No, you can't. And every time, the longer you talk about it, yes. the more, more you know, you're talking about it, I'm going, mm, Jason, okay, be <laughs> Don't careful. Don't say that. There, Jason, be careful. You yeah. know, because it's, it's just one of those things that it, yeah. it doesn't make sense to our human minds how that could be possible. And we try to come up with metaphors that make it work. And they may be helpful to some degree, but, not, but yeah. they're not really the picture because that's us trying to put mm -hmm. our view of something, our mm -hmm. minds around and in, you know we are finite. We exist in a single place at a single time, and, yes. and God is infinite. His His mind, you know, as as the scriptures would say, is His ways are not our ways. Right. His thoughts are not our. So, for us to be able to comprehend it, it, it doesn't it yes. doesn't fully fully grasp it. And know? I think for for a long time, in my understanding of God, and I would I would probably be at that same place where I'm. Mean, I want to understand it. Please help me explain it. Right. And and, I, and like you said, I heard a lot of people use a lot of analogies, and they were helpful but always fell short and then you could poke holes in them you know mm -hmm. because they all fall short but what what it helped me to come down on is that the moment that I feel that I have fully comprehended God and who he is and mm -hmm. what his nature is like I've I've got it complete there I don't have any more questions right all mystery is taken out of it to the longer that I've grown as a Christian, the more I realize that that's not a healthy place for me to be in because the moment I think I have God figured out, I've essentially put him in a box. Mm -hmm. And and if he is who he is, infinite, greater than everything, mm -hmm. then there's always going to be mm -hmm. things that I don't understand about him. Right. And once I do understand them, then I'm probably not talking about God anymore. Right. I'm talking about probably what I have figured out in my brain to talk about God. So yes. there's and, and the cool, and um, I was talking, talking about this to somebody one time. We as Westerners tend to not be comfortable with any sense of mystery yeah, when it comes right. to God. But the Eastern uh, culture had no problem with that. That's right. So when they would have talked about this and said, well, it's just a mystery, people go, yeah, yeah it is. Yeah. You know, and just moved on. We don't do it that way. Mm -mm. We want to go. Oh no, it can't be a mystery. And right. I've got to understand this because if I don't understand, then how can I how can I know God? Well, that's that's just not true. Right? Yeah. You know? Yeah. They're, it's this hyper rationalistic mindset that mm -hmm. makes me think that in order to in order to engage with anything, I have to be able to understand it, or someone yes. does. And it's 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 honestly it's almost like a pseudo scientific way. And the reason I say pseudo scientific is because it's not really scientific. Because yeah. even science understands there's mystery because that's the purpose of science yeah. is delving into there are things that we still don't fully understand, and we're coming up with theories to try and explain these things. Mm. But even those theories, occasionally we get deeper into it, and we go, oh, mm, that's not the you know that's mm -hmm. not the right theory on it. And so the reason I say pseudo science is it's it's almost. Um, like in, it's almost this egotistical mindset that I often have of like, mm -hmm. well, I sh like you said, I should understand it. Yeah. If I'm really rational, I need to have. So I just, I'm willing to accept a half answer mm -hmm. and say that's the full answer instead of embracing what you're what you're talking about, which I think is huge. Is saying there's just a mystery to God, yes. and that's kind of the the beauty of God being infinite. And I heard somebody say this once. I thought it was so good. Is that God's infinite? And God is love. And that means God's love is infinite. Hmm. And he said, so what that means is we can't ever fully comprehend it. And there's all parts of the scripture that talk about that, that, yeah. you know, that you'd be able to kind of comprehend how vast and wide and long. And what he's really saying is you can't. You can only just embrace <laughs> the mystery of yeah. God loves me. And what he says, because it's infinite, then it would take all of infinity to really understand it. That's all really heaven is, is mm -hmm. us 
diving deep into how big God is and yeah. how big his love is. And so, um, but and, yeah. And then the person who actually asked that question had, had mentioned in their s statement, they said, you know, a lot of people will say to me, you know, if Jesus is God, how in the world could he actually, he was actually praying to himself? What does that look like? Mm -hmm. And, and mm -hmm. that's, that's part of the mysterious part of it. Right. Is, you know, there is three distinct persons and they interact with one another and, and that, yeah, in a relational in a way. In a relational way. And that's yeah. that's such a that's to me, that, that has been such a cool part of understanding God in his nature is that he has existed for eternity, eternity past, eternity future, in community. Right. With himself because of that dynamic, the Trinity. And here I am, I'm getting talking about it and I'm hesitating because yeah. it's so mysterious. But that is what that is what is revealed to us in scripture, revealed to us through Jesus, mm -hmm. you know, that Yes, Jesus is just as fully God as God the Father and God the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And um, a lot of people want to push back on that and say, well, it can't be because there's God the Father and He, right. you know, and that whole thing. But, you know, Jesus, Jesus had no problem embracing the Godhood. Mm -hmm. When, I mean, I always point to people when they say, would Jesus really think He was God? And I say, well, if He really, if He didn't think He was God, then He, he certainly didn't act like it because anytime anyone referred to him that way, especially when you see towards the end of the Gospels, many times they're, they're falling down at his feet and worshiping him. Mm -hmm. He never stops anybody. Mm -hmm. and that's, that's interesting. If he really mm -hmm. did, if he really did value God right. the way he said he did, right. if somebody worships you, you go, oh no, that's not, that's, that, don't do that. In fact, yeah. we see the disciples doing that. Right. When people try to put God-like attributes on them, they go, no, 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 no we're just men. We're just right. people. Well, then they fall down and worship. And of course, in Revelation, you've got people falling down at the feet of Jesus and worshiping. And not once has anybody ever stopped from doing that. Right. He's taking, he is taking worship as God. So fully God, fully human, fully yeah. who he is, um, but still at the same time, all one. Relational so, in that way. And, yeah. you know, and you may hear some of this if you, you know, if you weren't the person who asked the question and kind of think, okay, but why does any of this matter? Yeah. Because it, cause it just feels... Like even all this is very kind of philosophical, a mental and, and, exercise. yeah, and it's and it's mystery. But you know, I heard someone explain it to me this way, and I thought this was so good. As they said, the part you talked about of there, God exists with, within a community within Himself. Mm -hmm. That God is is a community, and a part of that is when we say God is love. That's almost what exactly what we're talking about is that before we existed, before God had any outside object to be the object of his love. <laughs> yes. God, in relationship, because it talks about that, that the son submits to the father and the father mm -hmm. submits to the son, and it's this whole, it's this whole... Symbiotic relationship. Right, and, and that may seem once again weird, but what it comes to me is that God didn't need me, hmm. God chose me, mm -hmm. and that's a different, that's a whole different thing because all of us have ended up in relationships where either we or someone else has said, oh, I really love you. And because I love you, I need you. Yeah. And it quickly becomes clear, that's not really love because when I need you. when I, codependent. Yes, the Jerry Maguire, <laughs> you complete me. Yeah. That is when I need you, it becomes less about me loving you and about me making sure I get love. There you go. And God does not exist in that kind. That's how mm -hmm. God can purely be love is because God is love by his very nature. And so I get that the whole concept of, of all this may seem a little kind of intellectual and on a side doesn't matter. But I think that part you can, just as a reminder of yeah. God loves you, not because he needs you, but because he chooses to love you. And he, Absolutely. he's just who he is by his nature. I think that's huge. Good stuff, man. That's some application that makes... There makes, we go. Makes this discussion maybe a little more worthwhile. So. Well, and that was not short, so. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Apologize. Well, the original that. answer was the short. The first, we gave a one word the answer. The answer was it. no. But, That's right. So, anyway. But there is importance to the discussion. Yes. So thank you for asking the question because it definitely was a worthwhile discussion. Definitely. All right, on to Sunday. This past week, yes. uh, we continued Jesus is Greater. And uh, Ed, you don't, he's not here to defend himself, so no. we, can, we can say anything we want we absolutely. about his message. Well, I wasn't, I wasn't in the building on Sunday because I oh, was that's on, right. You were at a retreat. I was at a retreat with our students, but yeah. I was able to catch uh, the live stream on YouTube. If you yeah. don't know that, we have a live stream 
that uh, goes this week. It was actually at like three o'clock, so I got to watch it live with some people because it was actually it wasn't not live, live, it wasn't but, live, but there were some other people on at the time that, that I got to, to watch. But normally it's live during our 1030 service, and yep. you can catch it on Facebook. You can catch it on our YouTube channel, uh, this YouTube channel, correct? It's the same YouTube yeah. stream. So. Everything's on this channel. So, so, uh, so for some reason, you're out of town on a Sunday morning mm -hmm. and you still want to catch up with the teaching. And, and then once the once worship. we broadcast it live, it's captured and archived right here on this YouTube channel. So right. you can just watch it anytime, the full service from start to finish. And, or we, we also put the message, just the message part. Just the message. So you so. can pick and choose whatever yeah, you want. Yeah, it was so. yeah, it was a very good experience. Yes, I, I love Sunday's service. And yep. uh, he, here at the Sharpsburg campus, we had uh, eight baptisms the, I don't even think I knew that yet. Nobody told me the number. Well, there you go. Yeah, we had we had I'm eight as shocked as you are. Eight baptisms. So yeah, I got to uh, I I got to see. I think four of them were at uh, the ten thirty service. Four or five were at the ten thirty awesome. service, and so that was. And I had a couple of friends that were baptized. So it was very cool to very nice. to get to have that. And so cool. Well, Ed talked to us about the story of uh, Nicodemus come to Jesus at night and that whole conversation that they have surrounding the idea of being born again. So. Um, as I've done, as I'm doing now, when I watch uh, the message, I sit with my phone out mm. and uh, I look like I'm taking notes. I kind of am. I'm just, <laughs> I'm typing out quotes. I'm just, oh, there you go. Like, oh, there you go. That would be a good discussion to have on the Wednesday podcast. There so, you go. Here's one I pulled out that just it it rings true with me. It's something that uh, honestly I've gotten right over the past decade or so uh, in my approach to doing ministry and approaching people. Mm -hmm. But Ed talked about the fact that. God accepts us just as we are. Right. But then he went on to say, but not everything that we do. He doesn't accept all of that. Mm -hmm. But, and this is the key part, you don't have to change any of that in order to be accepted by mm -hmm. God. Once you are accepted by God, that's when God begins to change you. Right. But specifically that new birth that he went into and talked about. Right. And um, the thought that I had on that was, and, and I, I've, I've preached on this before, I actually took this this message back to my home church. I, my home church calls me every now and then and asks me to come speak for them. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what, what's the one thing that I've learned over the past few decades that I just want to take back to them and right. share with them? And it was that idea of um, these three words, uh, belong, believe, and uh, behave. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and the way it goes is like this. You know, The way I was sort of taught growing up in church was mm -hmm. that first you got to behave. You got to you got to do, all the, right do the right stuff and stop doing all the bad stuff mm -hmm. and clean up your act and if you're if you're in bad relationships or you're into drugs or you're you know a cheat and steal or whatever it is don't even in, don't even show up don't but, bother yeah. because you've got to get all that straight first and then once you've learned to behave then you come and we'll teach you how to believe. We'll give you all the right, right. thoughts and all the right ways to think about God. We'll help you figure out the Trinity or whatever yes, crazy exactly. stuff, you know, right. we want you to believe. And then once you get all that figured out, then you belong in our community. Right. And for me, I have learned that it, reading the life of Jesus, Jesus literally flipped that upside down. Yes. He invited people to come and belong, be a part of this community, come follow me, be on my team way before they ever did anything or believed anything. And then as they learned to behave and they learned to believe, then they grew mm -hmm. and into all that God wanted them to be. But the belong part was there from the beginning. And I think that that to me is the beauty of what Jesus came to bring right? and what he was inviting uh, I think Nicodemus too. Hey, mm -hmm. just come and be a part of this movement that I'm starting. Right. We'll we'll figure all the other stuff out. We'll get all that you know behavior stuff figured out because you'll have this rebirth that happens. Mm -hmm. And so, well, and behaving mm -hmm. always comes after the birth because yeah. if you think about once again, just think of and and Jesus and then the gospel right. I mean the um, the the New Testament writers use this language a lot of, of becoming like infants again mm -hmm. and talk, talk about being children imitating their father and all mm -hmm. this kind of stuff that when a child first comes out, they have no concept of any behavior, Absolutely right? Absolutely not. They come out and they also don't have any of the right ideas about stuff, but they belong. That's mm -hmm. the first important key concept. Yeah. In fact, that's, that's one thing that We'd you We'd never parent that way. Right. We, we would never say, until you start behaving, you're not my son. Right. I mean, and then we expect our 
God to do that as, as our heavenly Well, Father. we understand that as a key concept because um, I'm a, my wife and I are foster parents, and one of the mm. things they teach you in the way that, the, the, honestly, the difference in raising foster parents, I mean, raising when you have foster children who come into your home, as they said, it's similar, but unfortunately the way it often works is because the children come in at an older age. You start first on the behave part because you're mm. like, I need you to act the right way. I need mm. you to do this. But they talk about the important part is, uh, and it's called trust relationship based uh, something. I can't remember exactly the whole, you know, it's one of very long things that I can't remember. But <laughs> the idea basically behind it is that you have to start with the connecting part. You have to start with the belonging part. Mm. That you bring a child in and you say, hey, whether you ever behave the right way or not, mm. you're okay with me. Yep. I love you because that is what you do with an infant. When an infant comes in, the infant understands just by being uh, in your arms and you feeding mm -hmm. it and you take care of the infant understands mom and dad are for me mm -hmm. and then you start to teach them the right ideas yeah. and the right behavior but that comes out of the belonging yeah. and when you start with the behaving often even children they run from it because they go I'm not here for the behaving I'm here for the belonging yes I want to belong to you and it is the same way that God opens his arms mm -hmm. and says hey before you ever behave yep you belong to me. And then out of that, there's ways that I want you to live, not so that you belong to me, but because you belong to me. Exactly. You know, I've heard someone else explain it. It's almost like all the things that we tend to think of as the behaving, the kind of rules, that they're, they're more family rules, that they're things you do mm -hmm. because you're a part of this family. That's right. And, you know, when you go to someone else's house, you know, when you were a kid and you went to someone else's house, uh, the mom and dad of that family, or I'll flip it around the other way. When you had a friend come stay the night, your mm -hmm. mom and dad did not make them follow the same rules because mm -hmm. they go, yeah, they're not my kid. That's not my kid. They, they got away with stuff that you didn't get yeah. away with, and it's yeah. a it's a whole different way of really viewing mm -hmm. it. Yeah, and this is, and as Ed said on Sunday, this this has become sort of the hallmark, uh, you know, characteristic of Community Christian Church. Yes, and it, it's that whole thing of. We love everyone always. Everyone is welcome. Nobody is perfect, and we accept that coming in. And and that's 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 the way God has treated me. So right. therefore, I'm going to treat every single person that way. So you walk in the door, you bring whatever you've got, whatever you're doing. We used to say this. I don't know if you're new around here. You may not remember this, but back we changed the welcome script over the years. Oh, yes, and one yes. of the very first welcome scripts that we said, we try to say the same thing in different ways, but what we say to newcomers, we used to say this, we don't care uh, what you believe, we don't care what you did last night. Mm -hmm. that, that used to be, I used to say that every Sunday that mm -hmm. I got up on stage. I don't, we don't care what you did last night. You belong here. You're welcomed mm -hmm. here. And as to me now, as such a an accepted kind of simple statement as that is, it it became sort of a revolutionary thing to some people. It's like, mm -hmm. really? You don't, mm -hmm. I mean, of course I care that you're doing something that's sinful or harmful to you. That, that's not what we mean. We just mean, even if you did something right. that you would be ashamed of on Saturday night, the fact that you are here, but the fact that you walked in this door, does, that, does not, that does not preclude you from being here and being a part of this community and embracing the teaching and moving closer to Jesus. We're all, we're all walking the same direction. And whether you screwed it up last mm -hmm. night, that's irrelevant because that's, that's the point, you know? And I don't know, it just, it's, it seems to be more and more that I get to know a lot of Christians and that seems to be more of a controversial kind of, and, and I think yeah. Ed mentioned this in the message. I don't know if you remember him saying this, but and he's right. That that posture that we have taken over the years has given us a lot more heat from other Christians than I would have ever dreamed. Yeah. It it seems like well, you know, you're going soft on sin if you do that, and I I don't see it that way. I I think that's the only way to remedy sin. <laughs> yeah. Because the uh, the other way of just condemning it and outright excluding people because of it tends to just do the opposite of what yeah, Jesus people go into hiding was doing. And, yeah. yeah. Why would I want to be near someone who was just basically going to remind me of how much I didn't belong right. and how much I wasn't wanted and how horrible that I was? It's not the pe Most people that I meet, with some exceptions, most people that I meet, they do not need me to remind them of how screwed up they are. Right. They know for the most part. I mean, they just, they get, the, I've, I've done wrong. I don't think there's anybody that I cross paths with that I say, yeah, you, you think you're perfect? I don't think anybody thinks that. Right. 
unless they're just delusional. <laughs> right, but right. Everybody gets that. And so when you start from that and say, yeah, me too. Yes. And that's something I've heard um, your dad and I have mm-hmm. both talked about mm-hmm. is um, before the quote unquote me too movement. <laughs> so we can't ever use that terminology right. probably again, but we right. said we want to be a me too church. And what we meant by that was we want to be a church where no matter who comes in the door or what they confess. Mm -hmm. We want this to be a place where somebody looks them in the eye and says, you know what, me too. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm imperfect. I struggle with that. I'm I'm in the same boat as you are, no matter what they're here to confess. You know, I'm an alcoholic. I I struggle with an impure thought or attraction Mm -hmm. or I, you know, I hurt my family or I'm a bad dad or whatever it is. We can go, yeah, me too. Yeah. So let's come over and figure this out together. Yes. You know? Yeah. Well, and I think that's the part of the second second part of this I think is huge, which is the, you know, we talk a, a lot about we, we have different kind of things, and the no perfect people's one of the things, but for a while we had this phrasing where we go, everybody's welcome, nobody's perfect, and anything, anything is possible. possible. Yep. And I think that part is, is so is so huge because, uh, like you said on Sunday, you know, it's, this is a place where no perfect people are allowed and I've often said to people, hey, you can come just as you are, but we hope you leave completely different. Absolutely. We hope you leave and you do come to a place where people are saying, yeah, my marriage is not perfect. Mm-hmm. And yeah, my parenting is not perfect. So let's go on that journey together of mm-hmm. being more perfect like Jesus, because there there comes a point where, and, th- and this is often a phrase, I don't think it's a bad phrase. Don't hear me say this, but I think it often misleads where people say things like, well, Christians aren't perfect. We're just forgiven. <laughs> and what often ends up happening a lot is we stay so much in the not perfect and we're forgiven and nothing really changes about our lives. Yeah, it's like excusing it. I'm right. excusing, yeah, yeah, anything that I need to do. And we really want this to be a church where, like you said, everybody comes and everybody, and all of us are all of us are open about the fact that I'm not perfect mm-hmm. and I got problems and I'm working stuff out. But that the beauty that I, I've seen, because I grew up in this church and so I've not really known anything else, is, is, is all of us have seen marriages healed yeah. and families put together and addictions overcome. And I mean, it's just, I don't want to say like common places if it doesn't matter, but it's normal around here for lives Absolutely. to be changed. And I think it's, it's because of that first half of it of everybody's welcome, nobody's perfect. But then there has to be this commitment of all of us going. And so then anything can be possible. Mm-hmm. That because with Jesus, nothing is impossible. All things are possible with God. What that means is if I come and I just submit myself to him, and just say, I'm ready for, you know, Ed talks something about a new birth. Yep. That I will become like a child again and say, whatever you want me to do, I'm going to do. Anything is possible. Mm-hmm. And God's accepting me. So I'm not doing this to earn God's love. I'm doing this because I'm loved. And I think that's a great, you know, we talk about Dallas Willard almost every time. But that's the quote I love is he says, grace or this gift of God's love and forgiveness for us. He said, most of us say, well, you know, you can't earn it, which is right. You can't earn it. But he said, it's, it's, it's not opposed to effort. It's opposed to earning. Yes. Grace is not opposed to me. So a lot of us, what people end up doing is goes, because I can't earn it, then I shouldn't really work too hard at anything <laughs> because that might come across as me trying to earn mm-hmm. God's love. And you can't earn it, so just stop trying. And, it, and his point, I think, is huge is, it's grace is not opposed to you try, putting any effort, effort into the yes. relationship. It's opposed to you having to earn it. So now I can love and I can serve and I can live the way I was supposed to live, not because I feel like I have to do that in order to belong, but because mm-hmm. I already belong. That's what Paul meant when he said, Apostle Paul wrote, you know, work out your salvation. Right. He was, that's what he was calling. He was calling out effort. Right. Not earning, because he says in other places you can't earn your salvation. Absolutely. But then he says work out. So which one is it? It's both. He's saying work out your salvation. But then he throws in this phrase at the end of it. He says with fear and trembling. Mm-hmm. That means total humility, yep. understanding of who I am and where I've come from and what God has done for me already and putting me where I am in, in relationship to him. And so now out of the outpouring of that experience, that rebirth, right? then I... I, I put forth effort to become more of the person that he calls me to be. Not because I'm earning something, but because of that's the best way to live. Right. And so why wouldn't I want that? And if he truly is a loving father that I trust in, which we'll talk about in just a minute, mm-hmm. then why wouldn't I give myself over to that kind of life? Why Absolutely. wouldn't I do whatever he said? And like, like Ed said on Sunday, I just say that, okay, he's right about everything, everything. you know? One thing that I was going to say that you you triggered a thought in my head that you talk about growing up in this church and what you've seen and mm-hmm. the the kind of um, kind of atmosphere that we created here. Um, 
I've raised my kids in this church and right. my kids are now teenagers. And since day one, they've been here. And um, one of the things that that I that I know for sure has happened as an experience, being a, a part of this community is they have seen a lot of things that I know as a kid growing up in a more traditional setting of church, I did not see. Um, right. And a lot of people would say, oh, that's, are you sure you want to raise your kids in an environment where they can come to church and sit next to somebody who maybe is not the type of character I'd want my kids to hang right. around or, you know, I, I run into somebody at church this morning who smells of alcohol or mm -hmm. just, you know, put out a cigarette in the in the parking lot and all these things that they tag as being not wholesome or not, mm -hmm. you know. And I've said for years to people, you know, look, we're not safe for the whole family. Right, right. <laughs> we're, because we are a collection of people bruised and beat up and messed up in all kinds of different ways. Some of us hide it much better. Right. Others of us don't. And you are going to cross paths with somebody that, you probably wouldn't encourage your your kid to go hang around, but you know what? As 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 we come together, and as we experience this new birth, we see impossible things happen right. in people's lives, and right. we get to see and witness. Like you said, eight people giving their lives to Jesus mm -hmm. through baptism on Sunday. All, all adults. All which adults, is, which is not common yes, in every church. It just doesn't happen very often. So now we get to see that Jesus was right. This. The Holy Spirit gives birth to spiritual life in yes. people, and we get to see it. We get a front row seat to it every Sunday. And yes, there, there's there's times when you know some of it is messy and uncomfortable and just hard. Let's just call mm -hmm. it what it is. But mm -hmm. it's worth it in mm -hmm. the end when mm -hmm. I see those kinds of things happen. And then, I, and back to the comment I was making about my kids, I, I'm happy that they have gotten to see that happen, right. and they understand the love and the grace and the power of God. So absolutely, all of those things. All right, last thing I want to talk about from Sunday uh, that Ed mentioned was, um, and this is something that I didn't know. Man, I went to Bible college and mm -hmm. they didn't teach me this. Um, that phrase when in John three sixteen, when uh, it says God, loved, God so loved the world, he gave his only son that whoever would believe in him. And then that phrase, um, which again, I didn't know this until later. I even took Greek and it didn't hit me until later. The first time that those two words, believe in, were put oh, together right. in the Greek language. And up until that point, the phrase was just believe. And it was more on, on the lines of, hey, if you just believe that, something happened. Right. Or you believe in this, <coughs> this thought, that's when, it, but Jesus, you know, or, or if John just added that parenthetically, which we, there's, right. there's a know. debate on that. But whoever wrote that, that, that verse was intentionally trying to get us to know something that it's not just a belief that something happened. It is a belief in, yes. and it's that trust part that comes yes. in. That, and that really is, and I think I've seen some uh, translations of John 3, 16 say not necessarily believe, it's it's trust. Yes, because I Because that's that really well. what the phrase meant. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, the ultimately it's about putting your, your, your life's weight on something that mm -hmm. the decisions I make, um, are, are really bound up in whether he is who he said he is. Mm -hmm. And I think, that's, I think that's a huge part of, of what we talk about when we talk about following God is that, or following Jesus you know, in particular, is uh, everything is really based on who he is. And it's not just his teachings. And his teachings are obviously uh, so important and they're, they're revolutionary. There had never really been anything like this before. Uh, but really, him, be, his teachings are valuable because of him and his life and his death and his resurrection. That, that this whole thing of Jesus proving, hey, I am who I said I am. I am the Son of God. I am, as you know, John three sixteen says, God's Son that was sent here to give His life. That that being confirmed in His resurrection gives the teaching all the weight that it, that it needs. Mm -hmm. Because it, it really is one of those things that when you see all of this together. And you choose, I'm going to put my life's weight on that. And the reason I'm going to love my enemies and the, and the reason that I'm going to be as generous as I need to be and the reason that I'm going to not live for myself but live for, for others is not because it just makes sense because most of the time it's not going to make sense. In the, it's certainly mm -hmm. not in the moment. No. 
And so if it's just, well, hey, this is just, this is a real, this is the, you know, the smart way of doing things, it's not going to feel smart in the moment. It is smart because it comes from the smartest man who ever lived. That's right. But the only reason that we know it's smart is because of who he who is. Who he is. Right. And so if, you know, a lot of us have to start at, well, I'm just going to do what Jesus said. Mm -hmm. But at some point that does lead to this point of, I'm going to do everything he said yes. because of who he is. I can't tell you how many times I've sat with people in my office and, They'll come in and usually it's something on along the lines of this person has done me wrong, you know, right. and what am I going to do about this? And, and, and if I ever start to lean in to say, well, you know, at some point forgiveness has to take place and it's something and it can be something really egregious. And people, how in the world could I do that? Why in the world would I do that? That that's like waving a white flag. That's giving up. That's putting right, myself right. in a vulnerable position. And, and that doesn't make ultimately what they're saying to me is to forgive that person for what they've done or to turn the other cheek and just, you know, that doesn't make sense. And I just have to admit to them, okay, from where you sit right now, I get that. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense. And I see all your reasons and you're right. That logically does not make sense. So why do it? Well, ultimately I have to come back to that. It's, yeah. Well, Jesus said that was the way to live, and I I believe he's right about everything. Right. And so I'm I'm going, you know, I think it's Andy Stanley that I hear say this all the time. He says, you know, if you can if you can uh, predict your own resurrection and yeah, pull it off, right. I'll go with whatever you say. Yeah. You know? And That's, once once yeah. you've once you've convinced that and once you're convinced of that in your mind, then yeah, everything Jesus said is the way to go, whether or not it feels right in the moment. Yes. And I have to push past that and that's the struggle of that's the trust, trust part. That's the trust part. Is I just go, I don't get it, I don't feel it, but you know what? You said it, I'm going that direction and you're just going to have to you're just going to have to prove to me down the line, mm -hmm. you know, some and, and then I continue this uh, continuous trust even when I make the call and I start to do things that counterintuitive kind of thing mm -hmm. and I don't see the results right away, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I've talked with a friend recently about, you know, that I'm headed a direction and I don't feel I don't feel like anything's changing and I go, yeah, I get that. It's it's just may gonna take a while, mm -hmm. and in the in the meantime, you've got to continue to practice trust and yeah. believe that it's gonna eventually. And you know what? You might not get that feeling that you're looking for Ooh. eventually, but you got to just continue to. If he's right, and if he is who he said he is, then you're on the right path. Well, and I think <laughs> it's the part about you know when we talk about this of. When you said feeling, I think that's so true. And you even said counterintuitive. I think that's true. Is I think often when you hear this, you go, see, that's why I can't do the whole Jesus thing because it's just not logical. Mm -hmm. You've even said it doesn't yeah. feel logical in the moment. Mm -hmm. The problem is it actually is logical. Well, yeah. We often live off of intuition mm -hmm. and feeling. And, and we don't even realize we're doing it. Because, see, the logical thing is the thing you said, Andy said, that if there's a person who predicted their own resurrection and pulled it off and said, hey, the reason why is because I'm the son of God and I know everything, mm -hmm. then the only logical thing is to go, well, that's right. Well, then I'm just going to do what he says. But it doesn't feel logical in the moment because in, intuitively I feel like my perception of reality is the one that really works. It's like my, my oldest daughter loves to climb trees, and so she'll often get herself up into a tree so high she doesn't know how to come back down. And she'll get down, and sometimes the trees are ones where she'll have to, like, have someone boost her up into it. So there's no, the only way to get down is to jump. Mm -hmm. And she's scared to jump, and so I'll stand underneath her and say, jump into my arms. And everyone who's ever had to do anything like this with a child knows they yep. don't want to jump. Yep. They don't want to jump. And because in their mind, there's no logical way this is going to work. But I know, mm -hmm. as the older, wiser parent, I know from where I'm standing, there's no way you're going to jump and I'm not going to catch you. Mm -hmm. I know I'm going to catch you. And that's the trust part that yeah. comes into it. And that really is Jesus' whole paradigm for everything is that Jesus, you know, he says at one point, I only do what I see the Father doing. Mm. And it's because, and I don't just think that's even flowery, flowery kind of metaphorical language. I think Jesus was interacting with the kingdom of God at every moment. And he sees God at work in everything. And so when he sees God at work, he goes, well, I'm just going to do whatever God does. And so Jesus perceived a kingdom 
where the only logical thing to do when someone wrongs you is to love and forgive them. Mm -hmm. It's the yep. only logical thing to do because God is a God who says, I reward that. And that that's the way, because, you know, he says at one point, if you want to get ahead, if you want to be first, you got to be last. Mm -hmm. And that, that already just sense. seems completely <laughs> false. But Jesus goes, in my kingdom, that's the only way that makes sense. Yep. That's the only way. Or to be generous, or the one that I talk about a lot to people is when you get to a point where you're super anxious about something, and I have friends tell me this all the time, and I know you're going to tell me. I know what you're going to say, and I know it's right. Trust in Jesus. Mm -hmm. Trust in God. What I was, I was talking to a, a group on Sunday night, and I said, when that's what comes out, what you know is that's not actually what they believe then. Yeah. Because if yeah. you, if there's a difference between knowing and knowing trusting and in something, yep. what you ultimately trust is either I've got to figure it out or a lot of us have a kind of superstition around worry that mm -hmm. if I think about it or I you know, come at this mm -hmm. from every angle, then somehow that's going to keep it from happening. That's what you trust in because honestly, even just saying trust in God is not as what I would say offensive to someone dealing with anxiety is what Jesus would say, mm -hmm. which is when Jesus said, hey, you're worried about something, go look at the birds. That's right. You know, you come and you say, hey, I'm afraid my, you know, my marriage is in trouble. I'm just worried mm -hmm. about what's going to happen in the future. And then you come to Jesus and he goes, you know, the birds always have food. Mm -hmm. You'd be like, what are you talking about? <laughs> the birds have food. But Jesus perceived a world where the only logical thing is you look at the beauty of creation. Mm -hmm. You look how there really is enough resources for, for everyone. The problem with our world is not overpopulation. The problem with our world as far as resources go is we are not, the, we are not allocating them correctly. That's right. Because, though, because we are not using them in the correct way. And Jesus perceives a world that says, God's provided everything, so why would you worry? Mm -hmm. Why would you freak out? Why would you worry about tomorrow? Because tomorrow's going to take care of itself. That's the trust in part. Mm -hmm. And that's the part that's hard. Most of us are pretty good. I would say most of us who follow Jesus or call ourselves Christians are good at the believe that part. Yes. I, can, I, know all the, I know about the Trinity, or I know mm -hmm. that Jesus is the Son of God. If you gave me a test, I could check off all the correct answers. Yep. But when you come to my day-to-day Am I repenting, as you know, and I thought his example was great, of turning my feet, Yep. that I'm just turning my feet away from this old way of life and I'm pointing them towards Jesus. Most of us aren't doing that part. Yeah. And that's where the anything po is possible happens. Well, it's when, like you said, I've heard the exact same thing. Somebody will present me with a dilemma or an issue and they'll go, and I know, mm -hmm. I know what you're going to say, or I know what, you know, Jesus says, or I know what's right. But, yes, you know, and, and I always want to go, well, whenever you say but, it's basically say, forget everything I just said. Here's, yes. what, here's what I really yes. think. So if you, that's, that's the disconnect. I know what's right in my right. head, but I don't really feel like or I can't or I won't right. actually put it into practice. This is the distinction I think Jesus would make for us is you believe that something is true. Yes. But you have not yet believed in it. In other words, you haven't put, like to use that uh, uh, analogy, put your whole weight on it. Like we've always done with the stool. Like we're, we're both sitting on stools for those yep. of you who are not watching. And we always talk about, you know, I can, I can point to the stool and say, yep, I believe that that stool is there and that doesn't prove anything about my trust level. No. I can even, like right now I got one foot on the floor and, you know, half a butt cheek on the, yes. on the, one on cheek the stool. In it. I'm just one cheek in it. So, you know, I, I've, I've not fully put my trust in the stool until I take both feet off the ground like right. this and I sit like this. Now, because now if the thing goes down, I'm going down with it. Yes. So now I know my full weight, my full trust is in it. That's the way, that's the life Jesus calls us to do. Put full weight on yes. me. You know, put everything, all your, all, put all, everything in that, in the Jesus basket. Mm -hmm. And just trust that he's got it. He knows what he's doing. He'll take care of it. Then you're going to figure, start living that rebirth kind of life. And you'll, you'll live you know, according to the way Jesus called us to live in the kingdom. So. Well, and that's, that's the ultimate part of when you hear, or, you know, and it's in the Bible, you read it in the Bible where it says we walk by faith, not by sight. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not this idea of blind faith in that just someone tells you believe in Jesus, so you believe in Jesus, and yeah. that's the it. It may be that you, you investigate and you've got to figure out, but what you're investigating is, is whether Jesus himself is who he claimed to be. Mm -hmm. Did Jesus rise from the dead? Or, you know, if you can really put the focus on that, because and we've talked about this really in this series, there's so much that really, if when you talk about investigating Christianity, I'm investigating whether I want to be a Christian, 
And this is just, you can go on the internet and there are a thousand rabbit holes you'll get lost down oh, yeah. that won't ever point you towards Jesus. And if you can investigate whether this, you know, going back to your the stool analogy, investigate whether is this is this uh, properly secured, <laughs> you know, that I can yeah. put my weight on. Investigate how much weight can this hold. But you're investigating the the person, mm -hmm. and then at that point, Jesus says, "Hey, you walk by faith and trusting me, because I get you can't see the kingdom the way I. You can't see how it's logical mm -hmm. to to jump from that tree into my arms. Mm -hmm. But if you go by faith and not what you can see." your perception of reality, then in that moment, then you're really walking by faith. And I think that's an important part because I certainly don't want you to hear from what we're saying is just Christianity is blind faith and it's not right. logical. You it's gotta not. turn your brain off. It's not at all. We're it's saying not. it's only logical once you come to the conclusion, Jesus is who he said he is. He rose from the dead. He really is the son of God. At that point, the only logical conclusion is he's worthy of putting my trust in. Yep. So. All right. Anything else from Sunday you had? I, I thought the I thought everything the message was great. Thought the uh, the service was great, and obviously the the baptisms. That's that's yes. what really gets us uh, psyched around. It's not necessarily yeah. just a baptism, but <laughs> the fact that people's lives are changing and the yes. people are, are are getting it because um, <laughs> it really can transform, and that's real people. Definitely so. cool. So this coming Sunday, um, I'm going to be back up teaching, yep. and uh, we're taking another section of Jesus's life, and I'm going to. I don't know whether I want to give it away yet, but uh, let's just say this is one of those things that I think nobody wants to do, but everybody loves it when everybody else does it. Ooh, that's it's, a good little tease right there. It's I don't ever want to do it. I, I'm, I always draw back. I hope back everyone from does it. it for me. Yes, but everyone should treat me this way, but I don't want to treat anybody else this way. It's that. That's good. It's that thing. So uh, come check it out. Yeah. All right. Um, Ready for the top five? I am ready for the top five. Nathan has the top five today. It's me. And uh, it's just he and I, we're going to debate yeah. it. Yeah. Or maybe not debate. I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know. I, this They're one missing. actually I'll say is a little more open for debate because, you know, I'll say normally I, uh, I've i been approaching this with a little bit more of a tongue-in-cheek, not trying to give too much away by myself, but okay. I thought I, I'm actually going to be a little more vulnerable today, uh -oh. get a little more in with the top five here. And so okay. people know a lot of, about uh, my love of food, you see. Mm -hmm. I, I'm a food guy. You're a food guy. I am. But you know, we're, I think we're different kinds of food guys. Jason, Jason is a uh, excellent chef. If you didn't know this, we used to do <laughs> cooking contests back in the day with our, for our preteen thing. Jason would make some delicious creations. And and Jason, uh, would you call yourself a foodie? Uh, not in the way that most people use that word. All right, but you, I know you have very eclectic. I do taste, like a lot of things. A lot of different kinds. And I of love food. new stuff. I, but that's my nature anyway. I'm always wanting to move on i'm that way with music i'm that way with right. movies i want to i want to know what's next what's, what's the next? new thing so i'm not just like i'm on to one thing and i right. just want to do that over and over again so i'm i'm all open to trying new restaurants new yeah. tastes all that kind of stuff well so. this is the opposite of that this all is right. uh this is i'm a man of simple taste and really what i'm just mostly what i'm into is just some fried chicken that's well, there just, you go. That's just basic. I'm just a, I'm a fried chicken. And you grew up dude. in the South. You better I be did. on the fried I chicken. I did. And, and I have not hidden for other people my love of the great restaurant Popeyes. Mm. Everyone knows I, I, I talk about. We now got two mm. in in this uh, area right now. Got to get so that sponsorship. Man. I know. I'd, I'd like to get that in. So so this, though, uh, I think everyone would know if I talked about my favorite kind of chicken or anything. Everyone knows Popeye's going to win. Everyone knows also for me, or I shouldn't say maybe not everyone knows this, but I, I'm not a Chick-fil-A kind of guy. And I know yeah, that's even like that. more sacrilege within the, okay. the, the Christian community. You might go to hell for that. I'm just saying. I know I, that's some Jesus chicken. <laughs> I don't want to be messing with that. But I'm not saying I hate it. I'll eat it. But that's just not. Not my number one, but these are yep. my top five places to get chicken that's not Popeyes. So oh, okay. Popeyes. So you just go ahead and wipe that off. Yeah, because everyone first. knows that's number one. Like this is it's number one. Everything's else. Or now like let me ask you this: At Popeyes, what should I get? I mean, I don't know. I, I know people love the chicken sandwich. Uh, my wife's all I've yet to try the tenders. It. It's good. It's good. I really like it. But, I mean, I'm, I'm just. I'm the three-piece combo man. Okay. I want, and it depends. Spicy or no? Oh, definitely spicy. That's what I thought. De definitely I spicy. Thought. Okay. And uh, you got to make sure, you, you know, they give you the biscuit. Biscuit's a great part. Mm -hmm. All the sides are good. Onion mm -hmm. rings are delicious. Right. Everything's right there. But okay. this is it. So. Other places. You brought up the chicken sandwich at Popeye's. Mm -hmm. um, I think there was one that was left out. Okay. So this is a chicken sandwich. Okay. 
All right. The one left, so yeah, the, the, the Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich. I will say the Chick-fil-A spicy chicken sandwich is pretty good. I know a lot of people yeah, like that. Very, so that's pretty good. good. I personally good. think it should have been up against the Popeye sandwich. But there's another one I think people keep forgetting, which is Wendy's has a spicy chicken sandwich, which it is pretty play. darn good. It don't play. I'll it, tell you that right now. It's a good sandwich. It's pretty spicy. And if you ever go when they have the... Um, the ghost pepper hmm. stuff. They have like a ghost pepper sauce that they put on sometimes on the fries, hmm. but they sometimes put it on the sandwich with some jalapenos on top. Wow. It is a spicy, mm, mm, spicy mm. deal. So I think that, I think, so you, you're a fan also. I am a big fan. I, I also enjoy the spicy nuggets. Yes, the spicy nuggets are very they're, good. They're I think you can get that in regular. the four for four. You can. You, yeah. can. you can interchange spicy with regular now anytime you want. See, that's a good deal, right? That's a great deal. That's a good deal. All right, so then number four, I kind of went back and forth on other kind of traditional, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you got your KFC. Bojangles is really great. People yeah, love that sure. around here. Yeah, yeah. There's one place that uh, it's actually in Atlanta. I haven't been to the one that's in Atlanta, but I've been to the one that's in Memphis, which okay. is the original. It's called Gus's World Famous Chicken. Mm. And Jennifer and I went because we'd heard it was, it was World Famous Chicken, started sure. in Memphis. Mm -hmm. There ain't nothing unique i would say about this chicken but it's the best tasting fried chicken i can't tell you wow. what it is and wow. i understand i think there's one like uh i know there's one on peach street street hmm. like in downtown over by where the mall is there okay. like right andrew young meets Petrie. But anyway right. cool uh, it is absolutely delicious i have chicken. not had it i'd like to try it yeah, yeah. so i'm we'll gonna have to take a staff field trip to up to yeah, we'll up do to, a remote podcast there you go gus's gus's world there famous chicken yeah. so, all right it's a good deal. All right. The number three, I'm pretty sure you've had this. Okay. This one's pretty darn good. This is the buffalo chicken roller at Quick Trip. <laughs> that buffalo chicken roll, that's a good piece of chicken right you there. Can't, you can't go wrong with roller food. I'm just saying, the Quick Trip roller food, that's good it's food good right stuff. there. It's, it's good pretty stuff. spicy. You get the yeah, little buffalo is. one. It it's is. got like uh, some kind of cheese in the middle yeah, of it. Yeah, they're great. And they're huge, they're man. Yeah, really it's, a, it's, a big, it's a big roller. Eat so. two of those, I'm full. Yeah, yeah. well, and you get like two for 250 or something yeah. like that. It's, it's you know? definitely worth it. Go get a big old drink. It's good. I just love Quick Trip. Quick Always. Trip's a great quick Trip, just I go in there and just get lost. You know? Yeah. Well, it's a, you might actually get lost. It's a big. It's a big. A lot of station. stuff. A lot of good stuff. That's right. Awesome. All right. All right. Here we go. Now this is getting a little more intricate. This is number two. Mm -hmm. Best place to get chicken. Uh, you can get this in Noonan. Is the Cajun. So this is is two different kinds of hot wings. Oh. There's the Cajun wings mm -hmm. and the spicy Korean Q wings at Wingstop, Wingstop here in here in Noonan, in Ashley Park. So those of you who are watching mm -hmm. this over at the Ashley Park campus, after church on Sunday, right across the way. go right over there. They have delicious, they, 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 they fry everything right there, fresh in the store, even the french fries, they cut them up, mm. they fry them right there. But yeah, I, I always go, and when I go, I get, you normally, because you can split up your order, so I'll get about five that are, uh, that are the Cajun, mm -hmm. and then I'll get five. They're spicy, spicy Korean, Korean. Q. I haven't tried it is, that. Uh, it is like a sweet barbecue sauce that is really spicy. It is one of the hmm. spicier ones they offer. And it in, is, in that place owned by like a famous rapper? It is owned by Rick Ross. Rick who Ross. I understand yeah. was, was, in, uh, was in it. In fact, I had a student who didn't know who Rick Ross was, but had noticed there was a lot of people around trying to take pictures of Rick Ross going, is this Rick Ross? Is this Rick Ross? <laughs> <laughs> so like trying to be very kind of, you know. Oh, that's so, great. Anyway. But okay, I'm, that's another place I need to I never saw the picture, so I don't. I couldn't tell if it I'm was Rick Ross or not. I'm going to have to try that. All right, cool. All right, and then number one. Number one. Number one Besides place Popeyes. to get. They're uh, Hattie B's Nashville Hot Chicken. Hmm. Uh, you get the get the large white plate, which is, uh, you got you got white meat plate, you got your dark meat plate. But with both, if you, uh, I'm, I'm more of a chicken breast kind of guy. So ah. I like, you can get two basically quarters. You get the breast and the wing. You get two of those. It's like Dang. ten bucks, it's, and they're huge. Wow. They're huge, super spicy. And then with the dark meat, I think it's you get a leg and a uh, and a thigh. So whatever your pick is on that, but I'm more I'm more on the white meat. Now, side what do we find that. a Hattie B's? Now there's a Hattie B's on Moreland Avenue. Okay. And it is uh, it is deli it is worth the drive. I'll drive <laughs> I'll drive almost forty minutes to go up to Hattie B's, and uh, right. it's a little harder once you got four kids. But when it was just when we just had the one, we would we would go up there pretty often and get some Hattie B's. And there, now I will say there's a Nashville hot chicken place here in Noonan now, Joella's, mm -hmm. and it's pretty good, but it's not as good as Hattie B's. Okay. It's just it ain't even getting close. So well, you ain't gonna get sponsored by them now. I know. Just Joella's ain't gonna bit. ain't gonna do. It. I will say this: I went into Joella's um, the other day, and because uh, I I gone when it opened, I was very excited. You yeah, know this. I knew. This. I was very excited yeah, about you... Joella's. 
I went opening. Way more excited than I I usually get when restaurants Any, Well, anyway, because once again, <laughs> I've only got like five things I'm really excited uh, about. In, 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 chicken's in, one. Chicken is, is one of the things. So I went, I went, and I, I like to find, I don't want no Joella's people coming at me, mm -hmm. but my wife and I decided recently, we're going to go back. So it was my birthday, and I said, well, I'm going I'm to go back, I'm going to try it. And one of my complaints was that the hot, I didn't think it was that hot. Uh, hot enough. And then, so I thought, okay. So they had one that was over the over it, and I can't remember what it's called, but it's their number one. And I order it, and when I order it, they say, okay, well, you have to sign a waiver. Hmm. And I said, a waiver? I like this. And I said, <laughs> okay. So I signed the waiver, and I thought, well, this well, is probably just a What market. does the waiver do? I actually? guess, like, I can't sue you them can't if sue I them? have a heart attack okay. while eating the chicken. Whatever. So uh, we go and we sit down and we're kind of talking. I, was like, I think it's just marketing because the first, the hot wasn't that hot. Like mm -hmm. I put like on a one to 10 scale, their hottest besides this was like a five or a six. So yeah. I thought, okay, well the hot's going to be like an eight or nine. This thing was made with Carolina Reaper peppers. Oh. So it's like 2.5 million on the yeah. Scoville thing. And so I didn't realize that until I took a bite of it and I could not breathe. It was so wow. hot. It was so hot. I was, I told him, I said, this isn't even fun anymore. Like, <laughs> you go from a six to like a 13? Why? I want something in between. There's no intermediate. I want something in between. So I will say this if you ever go, and apparently they have like a challenge where if you can eat two of the quarter of their quarters with a breast and a wing, you can eat two of those. Uh, then I guess like you get your meal for free or something. Wow. But I can't imagine a person. Did you even food. finish? Well, I had to take all the breading off. I could eat the chicken, which was still spicy because yeah. it all, but it wasn't as spicy as the as mm. the stuff. So I will say this, Joel, is you beat me on that. Okay. You beat me on that. That was pretty darn spicy. That's got to be hot. I've seen you eat some hot stuff. So. It was. It wow. Was, it was hot. Well, that's good to know, man. Yeah. But anyway, there you go. That's my top five. So top you five ever chicken. get up to Atlanta, Hattie B's, <laughs> Gus's World Famous? That's the place to go, man. There you go. So. so. And we're always helping you out finding yeah, new places. Right. So. And maybe y'all can help us out with getting us some sponsorships. Yeah, just bring us some chicken. I'll yeah, take, just some free take, chicken next course. And, and what's interesting is, you know, your dad's not a chicken guy. No, he's not. But he always say the only way he'll eat it is fried. Uh -huh. He doesn't mind it fried. Uh -huh. I, I think I think chicken, and I, I'd agree with him. Is I'm not much into a grilled piece of chicken. Mm -hmm. But I will say, if it's fried. It kind of ruins it, you know. Yeah, that's right. Why are we, why are we doing that? All the health no nuts are, are screaming right. at us right now. Oh, I understand. I'm not, I eat grilled chicken. I'm not happy about yeah, it. Yeah, that's right. I'm not happy about it. I'd rather have it fried up. I, I would. There's not much in this world that I wouldn't rather have fried. Oh, that's, yeah. I mean, 100%. come on. Let's just be honest. 100%. Oreos are good. Fried Oreos that's right. are amazing. It's that, I know what's good for me. That's right. And I know what I like. That's right. That's Neither, right. Then those things don't necessarily cross paths. I'm just saying. That's so, right. You know. All right. So, all right. Well, thanks for uh, doing this. Uh, I am the duo. top five. I'm ready and, to do it. Yeah. And thanks for. Uh, I think we did all right. We without held it, it down. We did all right without it. I'm sure. End. I mean, that was plenty long. So there you guys go. That's right. You so, got your uh, weekly Christ, community Christian uh, little taste right there. So there you go. Ed might listen back on this and go, "Wow. Hmm." Yeah. Maybe I'm not needed. Maybe. We'll see. Know. We'll just see. We'll see what he says. He might be back next week. He might not. He we'll might see. not. All right. Well, have a good week, guys. We'll see you on Sunday. See ya.